Love this podcast? Consider supporting this show. You decide how much you give and there's no regular commitment. Visit the link in the episode description to support now. You are now listening to Your Life, the Mixtape. My guest this week uh, really needs no introduction, um, but I have one and I'm going to read it. He is an actor, musician, writer, and producer. Uh, He grew up on a farm outside a small rural town in Illinois. As an only child, he spent much of his time in nature exploring the acres of woods that surrounded his family's property. Beyond that, he dedicated his formative years to academics, basketball, baseball, and drumming along to 90s rock and alternative in his parents' basement. In addition to film and television, uh, he has been diving into songwriting and music production and aims to release a full-length record with music partner Vanessa Silberman in 2023. Please welcome to the show the iconic, the incomparable Mr. Ryan Carnes. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Greg? Good to be here. I'm fantastic. I'm so glad you're here. Um, So kind of off book for a second, um, what made you decide to now release an album as opposed to like earlier in your career? Yeah. So really it it just comes down to, I think, um, in, in intentionality and, and reconnecting with music in a way that, that I hadn't in a long time. So music was my first love when I was, I think around three years old, as the story goes, I started pulling (laughs) pots and pans out of the cabinets that I could reach in my parents' kitchen. And, and banging on them with wooden spoons and spatulas, whatever, whatever I could find. And so they fortunately had the foresight to go. And, and they, they both have um, s- some creative backgrounds. Like my, my dad played the cornet and was in band all the way through high school and maybe even college. Uh, my mom and he had done musicals together in high school. So they, they had that in their, in their brains. You know, they had that in their consciousness. So they said, well, you know, maybe, maybe he's meant to be a drummer. Maybe we should get him a, a little toy drum set and just see. And uh, I loved it. I took to it. And, um, you know, I, I continued all through junior high, high school. I played in jazz band, pep band, marching band, all, all the bands. <laughs> and um, at the same time, though, it was always, it, it was like, it was a creative release for me. It was a, it was a, it was a place where I could go um and and just get feel free and get frustration out and you know when i was sad or depressed or down or angry or whatever like i'd go to the basement and just bang on the drums so even though it was it was that for me it was also always kind of a a bit of a hobby um and i think i think that's due probably to a couple of things i mean i was i was also an athlete i was a pretty physically active kid and so I like to be out on the court or the field running around and, you know, and, and, and having that physical outlet. And, and, I, and I ended up being fairly good at sports. So, and also culturally where I grew up, it was like people leaned more into sports than they did the fine arts. It's just, you know, just not bad, just how it was. Yeah. And I think for all those reasons, Music, like, and, and, and one more thing I'll say, and I've heard other artists say this as well, like, you know, when they were children, they didn't know that they could be a professional fill in the blank when they grew up. They didn't know they could be a professional musician. They didn't know they could be a professional actor. I kind of fell into acting on accident. Um, prior to that, I didn't, I, it, that wasn't even in, within the scope of possibility in my own mind. And music fit into that category as well. So it was, it was a hobby. And then around, I want to say 20, 2010, 2011, I really, I, I, I really started missing it a lot. Um, I hadn't been, hadn't been very active with music for, for a number, really since I moved to LA to become an actor. And um, I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start playing more frequently. I'm going to get back in the rehearsal studio and, and I'm going to make this more of a priority because... 
honestly, and I mean, this probably sounds like a cliche, but it was like, you know, my, my soul kind of needs music and it needs it in, in a way in which I'm, I'm, I'm making it with other people, even if, even if it's just jamming, you know, even if it's not something formal, even if it's informal, but I, I just, I felt like my soul needed it. And around 2013, I think I set the intention to start meeting other musicians and to start playing. And lo and behold, uh, at a mutual friend's holiday party, I met this, uh, this woman named Andrea, who was the lead singer in a band. And, you know, I, and she, her, her brother was like a, a friend of a friend. And so we started talking and I said, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm just trying to get back in the, in the room and jam with some musicians. And she goes, cool, well, come, come jam with us sometime. And I did. And it was really fun and went really well. And then it turned out that two months later, their drummer and bassist left the band to move out of state. And they said, hey, we need a drummer. Do you want to do it? And so I stepped in, became the drummer for that band. Um, we cut a demo. Unfortunately, the lead singer and guitarist who were in a relationship broke up. And along with their breakup, so went the band. Um, and then from there, you know, I, I played, I've played with a few other artists in, you know, somewhat limited capacity, uh, cut a demo with another band, then that band broke up right after we cut the demo. <laughs> and when I met Vanessa in 20, gosh, I don't know, must have been like 2016, maybe, um, we connected at, at, again at another holiday party. <laughs> and, um, she was like, hey, well, you know, let's jam sometime when I'm back in L.A. And so we did. And it was super fun. And then a couple months later, she called me and said, hey, can you sit in on a couple of songs on this set that I'm going to play at the Silver Lake Lounge? And I said, of course. And then from there, it was like, I think I played another gig with her. And then and, and she sort of had some drummers coming and going. And then at some point, the slot opened and she was like, dude, um, do you want to be my drummer? And I was like, fuck yeah. Because I love <laughs> Vanessa's, her, her, her artistry, her, her musicianship. I mean, she's an incredible performer. And so I started as her drummer. And over the last few years, our relationship has evolved. And, you know, now I'm, I'm singing background vocals on, on some of the songs and helping produce the songs as well. So it's, it's really turned into a really, um, beautiful partnership we, we 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 work very well together creatively so i know that's a very long answer to your question <laughs> but i just wanted to i wanted to like provide some context and lay some groundwork for, to to say that it's been a journey man it's been it's been a journey of i think returning to myself you know a part of myself and, and returning to this thing that was that was my first love as far as something that really inspired me and 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 made me feel great that's fantastic. I love that. I, so tell me, I, what's, what's the last song that you listened to? Um, I believe it was Black Eyes Blue by Corey Taylor. Oh, nice. It's such a good song. That's a fantastic song. I like that. Okay. You know, and that, that's a song for me that every once in a while I hear a song. And I, I don't know, there's just... It, it hits me differently where it, it, it just feels, I don't know, man, it feel, it feels like big. It feels inspiring. It feels, um, opening. I don't know that that was kind of my, my, my first experience of that song. The first time I heard it, I was like, Whoa, what, is, this is cool. I think one of the things that I'm a big fan of gang vocals and, and, and like, and stacking, um, vocals like in, in, in verses, sure, but, but also in choruses. So the chorus just sounds really big and fat. And they did that, you know, the, it, it's really, really well produced. And so the choruses just sound like epic to me. And, and I really latched onto it and I was, and I had it on repeat um, just yesterday, I think. Nice. Um, who is an artist that you feel like everybody should be listening to? Mm. 
Wow. That's a good one. Ah, uh, gosh. I'm going to go with, I'm, I'm going to have to shoot from the hip a little bit here. I'm going to go with Alt J. Nice. I know a lot of people, you know, over since 2014, I think the record they released in 2014, they've certainly gained a much larger following. But to me, there's, you know, like to me, they're, they're, they're in, they should be in the category of like, a radio head like I, I i think that they're that level of 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 creative and just kind of genius in certain ways I, i'm a huge fan yeah i i absolutely agree absolutely agree what's the first song that you remember hearing <sighs> the first song i remember hearing um Man, you know what? I don't have a distinct memory of like a first, but you know what? Here's, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say Cherry Pie by Warrant. <laughs> that is a fantastic answer. <laughs> hey, you got to gotta keep it fun too, right? I love that. And that's also, that's also I'll add, the first music video I remember seeing. <laughs> <laughs> What's the song that uh, you put on, like, whenever you're in your feelings? Mm, probably something from Sigur Rós. Oh, nice. Excellent. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, I mean, their, their stuff to me is just, it's all, it's, all, it's all the feels. Yeah. When I listen to it, yeah. <laughs> And then on, on the flip side of that, uh, what's the song that immediately puts you in a good mood? Metalingus by Alter Bridge. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah. I like that. What's the best song to sing in the shower? Hmm. I don't know, but I'm going to say Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. Hell yeah. Actually, a very popular answer to this question. No way, is it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's usually it's usually somewhere like it, it goes from either Bon Jovi to Celine Dion. There's okay. like never any gray area with it. Like you're either on one end or the other. Yeah. <laughs> what song best summarizes what love is mm. wow um i can think of a lot of songs that are that i think are poor representations of what love is <laughs> it's a little harder to come up with something i think is an accurate representation of what love is um you know what i'm gonna go with delilah by the plain white tees oh nice pretty romantic song and every time I hear it, I'm just like, damn, this is a great song. It's, it's just so, it's such solid songwriting, I think. No, it absolutely, like it absolutely is. Yeah. It's, and, it's, and, it, and it's timeless. Yes. I think also, you know, it, it's, it's like, it, it doesn't, it sounds like it could have come out today. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, what's the best breakup song? Uh, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you two. Okay. And these may or may not come from personal experience. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the band. Um, cause I'm still alive, but I'm barely breathing. It's prayed to a God that I don't believe in. Uh, you got time while I got, um, it's, um, I'm, if you, I'm like I can, I can see the video. Yeah, me too. If you, if, and I'll think of it like tomorrow morning, and I'll go, oh, oh yeah, that song. I'm gonna try to look it up real quick. Um, the script, break even. There we go. Yeah, man, that's. I, I remember. Um, I went through this uh, this awful, painful breakup. 
after three and a half year relationship with uh, with a girl that I really loved and cared about. And, you know, we talked about marriage and, and ultimately, and we, and we worked really hard at it. Ultimately, it just didn't, you know, it, I think we just weren't the right fit for each other. And, um, oof, man, for, for a good couple months, I was just wrecked. And I remember, I think she sent me this song. And we, like, after we broke it, we were, we were still in touch and, like, trying to, we, we cared very much for each other. So it wasn't like, a, you know, F off and die. I never want to talk to you again. And she sent me this song one day and I listened to it and I was just like, oh, oh, wow. oh my God. Oh, yeah, it really, it, it, uh, it, it, it cut me open for sure. So I'm, I'm going to go with that one. And I said I was going to name a second one, but now I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that one. All right. Um, what is the song that has to be played at max volume anytime it comes on? Well, there's, there's, there's many of those for me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with any tool song. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Any tool song. And if I had to pick one, I would say 46 and two. Oh, nice. That's probably my favorite tool song. I like that. What is the greatest song from a film soundtrack? Um, I'm going to go with Falling Slowly by Glenn Hanser to Marquita Herrera. Yes. Um, Absolutely. Who, who at the time were, what the Swell Season, right? I think was the mm -hmm. name of the band that they had. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's probably my, my favorite ever. Underrated. Definitely underrated. Yeah. Start to finish, what is the greatest film soundtrack? Oh man. Um, ooh, that you know, I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go super old school and go with the Judgment Night soundtrack. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean that that was I, I think, and I don't I don't know, I would have to look back on it a little bit, but I think. I feel like that soundtrack was was pretty groundbreaking in the sense that not only was it, I think it was kind of like the beginning of of this rock rap hybrid thing that started happening. Yeah. But also, I think, and again, I I, I I can't say this with authority, but I feel like that was one of the one of the soundtracks that kind of um, changed the way soundtracks were done. I think. I feel that though, yeah. Like I yeah, can see that. It, it just sort of like brought and 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 I don't know. I, I actually had this conversation with somebody a couple of months ago. I think in the '90s and the early 2000s, or maybe that maybe like the '80s and '90s, um, there were a lot of really epic soundtracks to movies with with like songs that were that were also really successful on their own, and then they and they put them in these movies to to really create. Um, uh, what I would say is like a, like a potent soundscape and, and sound ultimately soundtrack for the movie. I feel like that's not done as much anymore. I, I, I feel like soundtracks have changed and, and, they're, and they're not this like sort of big conglomeration of huge songs all put together in one place. And, you know, maybe I, you could argue it's a good thing, you could argue it's a bad thing. I mean, I think one, one thing that happens a lot now more than it did back then is that new artists get placed or, or, or artists that are less, lesser known get placements in film like that. And it can really break people. So, you know, that's, that's a good thing, but yeah, yeah I think Ju judgment night soundtrack was, was pretty epic. It is. Uh, it's funny. You brought up the like soundtracks of the eighties and nineties, because I was also just had a conversation about it. And the example that I used was um, the, the, Batman film soundtracks from the nineties yeah. that like, yeah. you know, they don't do that anymore. Right. Right. You know what? I, as you said, that reminded me of Armageddon. That's a pretty great soundtrack. Yeah. That's a good one for sure. What television show has the best theme song? Does it have to be a current television show? No. Okay. I'm, I'm a, I still remember, and I'm I'm going to say this just because it, it it's like it's one that I still remember. It just when I heard it, I was like, "Oh wow, this is a great song." Um, the Gavin, I think it's Gavin DeGraw. I don't want to be from One Tree Hill. 
One Tree Hill, man. Yeah. That was a great theme song. It absolutely was. And uh, in the in the later seasons, they had artists cover it for each episode. So oh, it was okay. by somebody different each episode. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. What is the best song from a Disney film? <laughs> um. I laugh because I, I've, I've, as shocking as it is, I've seen hardly any Disney films. In, <laughs> like, like obviously, like we know Disney owns Marvel, so by extension, right. right? But, but like, like, like Disney so, proper. Yeah, um, I remember I went on a date one time with this girl, and she was telling me that she was such a huge fan of Disney, and she was like, "What's your favorite Disney movie?" And I was like, "I don't, I don't know." I I don't remember. I don't even know what Disney movies I've seen. I know I've seen some. Like I know I saw 101 Dalmatians way back in the day. But other than that, I'm like, I don't know. I got I got nothing. So I'm gonna go with was Lion King. Is that Disney? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna go with. Uh, I don't even know what the name of it is, but like the Circle name. of Life. Circle of Life. There we go. Yeah. Let's go excellent with answer. My I. I'm not like a huge Disney fan. So like when somebody asks recently, like, Oh, what's your favorite Disney film? Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Something from Star Wars. What is the song that whenever it comes on, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you're going to dance to this song. Mm, man. I, I know, I know there's one or two. Like that. Um, so I suppose it also depends on our definition of dance. Um, I mean, gosh, that's tough. <clears throat> Can we come back to that one? We, yeah, that absolutely. All right, let's come back to that one. What is the song that means the most to you? Not necessarily because of the song itself. The song itself could be crap. Uh, more because of like the memories you have attached to it. Hmm. Um, well, I'm going to give you two, one, okay. one funny and one somber. Is that okay? Can I give you two? Absolutely. Okay. So one, um, the, the Frank song, my way. And nice. the reason being, um, when, when my, my I was, I was extremely co close to my grandfather, my mother's father. And, uh, I mean, we, we just had like the most incredible relationship and, when he passed away in 2010, I was, I was devastated, like gutted. And my mom asked me what songs, you know, do you have any ideas for songs for the funeral? And I said, of course I do. You know, let me, let me, let me sit down and make a list. And so uh, I remember I was with my girlfriend at the time, I was on the flight back to Illinois like, you know, going through songs and making a list. And for me, the first one that came to mind was my way because my grandfather was such, I mean, he was so many things, but he really did in certain ways march to the beat of his own drum and he was stubborn, which, which was frustrating at times, but also I really respected, you know, cause he was a very principled man, very, very principled. And so, um, yeah, I, I, that was, that was like, that's an obvious one for, for grandpa. So that's one. And then on, on a much lighter note, um, Winds of Change by, it's Kansas. Yeah. And, I, and here's why, because that was, that song got a lot of play at my junior high dances. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I just <laughs> feel, well, actually, I probably do know why. Because I think anytime that song came on, it was like, okay, it's time to slow dance. Find, find a girl, cozy up to her, you know, time to slow dance. So that, that, that's, that's the other one. It just reminds me of, uh, of, of very formative years. Nice. Those are both fantastic answers. Love that. What song is the ultimate party anthem? Um... <laughs> Oh, there's so many. There's so many. But I'm going to go with Jump Around by House of Pain. Nice. Excellent answer. Yes. 
What artist makes the most appearances on your playlists? Gosh, we should ask Spotify. Um, <laughs> probably, probably either Alt J or Shine Down. Oh, nice. Or Cedar. Probably one of those three. Nice. Yeah, I'm a big fan of of, of the catalogs of all of those artists. Who is an artist that is considered to be a one hit wonder that you feel like should have been bigger? Mm. Well, I, I don't, I'm not necessarily going to know if this artist is considered a one hit wonder per se. So um, I guess it'll just be kind of about my perception. Um, mm. I'm going to go with, Space Hog. Okay. Do you remember remember that song in the meantime? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't I don't remember any other big hits that they had. I know that was a really big hit, but they I may have had other big hits. I feel like you might be right on this one. Yeah, I'm not I'm not certain, but that's I mean, to me, that's a great song. And uh I, I thought they were a cool band. I like that. What would what would be can, can I can I ask you what would be your answer to that one? Um, my answer to that um, it 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 changes. Um, more recently, it's been. Uh, do you remember the song Mambo Number no. Five? Yeah, that guy. Okay, Lou Bega. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. What is the song that reminds you of home? Mm-hmm. Anything from Roy Orbison. Nice. Reason being, um, my mom was a huge, well, still is a huge Roy Orbison fan. He's definitely her favorite artist. And when I was a kid, <clears throat> in between, <laughs> in the rotation of like, because I was with my mom a lot. Um, I'm an only child, and she was a teacher. So in the summer, she had the entire summer off. So we, you know, we'd pal around all summer and go to the public pool and do whatever we did. So in, in amongst the rotation of like Appetite for Destruction and House of Pain and because she was pretty, she was pretty cool in terms of the stuff that she let me listen to. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if I would let my kids listen to <laughs> that my mom let me listen to. I guess she had, she had faith in, 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 in her, her rearing of me to know that, um, you know, some of, the, some of the music that I listened to wouldn't ultimately turn me into someone else. But Roy Orbison was, was, was on that list heavily, heavily. Um, nice. Yeah, I mean, she, we, we always listened to Roy Orbison in the car. And, you know, at the time I'd never heard of him, but I, I came to know him um, really quickly. And, and uh, yeah, it's, I, I, still, I still like to listen to Roy Orbison sometimes. What is the greatest love song of all time? Ah, oh, man. Well, this is super obscure and probably nothing that anyone has said before. So I'm going to go with it. Um, dust to Dust by the Civil Wars. Nice. Okay. You know that one? I do. My, my brother's a big fan of them. Yeah, I just think it's it's really, really beautiful and really honest, you know, and it's on, and, and it's a little bit melancholy too, I think at the same time, which, which I think feels fairly accurate because uh, <laughs> love is not always roses and butterflies, you know, it can be, can be tough, can be hard. Yeah. So I'm going to go with that one. Excellent. What is the song that defined your generation? Ah, uh, man. I think that kind of depends on the time at which we pull it from, but Smells Like Teen Spirit has got to be one. Because that was a song that when it came out, it was just like, holy shit, what yeah. is this? And in, in combination with the music video, you know, it was like, I, I saw, there's this guy, there's this drummer that I, that I follow on Instagram named Dave Elich. And uh, Dave, he was recently on tour with Weezer. Um, I believe he played with... Uh, oh man, he's played with a bunch of bands, but the Mars Volta, I believe, is one of oh, nice. 
Nice. The bands that he he played with for for a while. Incredible drummer and teacher. And um, I saw him post something. I don't even remember what song it was or, or what artist it was, but he posted something recently saying the first time he heard this artist or this song, I think it was a song, there was something, he said there was something, and he said some other adjectives, but, but one of them that I remember was dangerous. He said like there was something dangerous about it. And I started thinking about it. And I realized that, as, you know, as a, young, as a kid, so many of the artists that I was drawn to and became my favorite artists, at least for a time, or became my favorite songs, at least for a time, if not still, there was an element of danger to them. It, it, it was, it, there was an element of like, whoa, I've never heard something like this before. Oh, I know who I was thinking about re related to that was... Um, David Draymond from Disturbed. So nice. uh, I, went to, I went to one of the early Ozfests in oh, wow. Missouri. I don't remember what year it was, but I went to one, one of the early ones. And um, their first record had just come out with Down, the Down With The Sickness record. And <laughs> the first time I heard that song, I was just like, Oh my God, what is this? Like this guy is like, like growling, barking into the microphone. Like what? Oh my God, what is this? And I went to Ozfest and they were on the side stage and they wheeled him out on a, um, on a, on a, what's the word? Not, not gurney. Like um, the, the, the thing used to move a dolly. Oh, they wheeled him out on a dolly in a straight jacket, a la, Billy Joe Armstrong in the, the basket case video. Yeah. They wheel him out on stage on a dolly in a straight jacket and then they like set him up and he's just standing there. And you know, he's like, he's a scary looking dude <laughs> standing there on the edge of the stage, like staring at people while, while like their walk on music is playing. And I was just, I was like simultaneously terrified because <laughs> I was a kid and also completely intrigued. And, and, then, and then when they played their set, I, I was just like, they, they, they melted my face. It was so, so fucking epic. <laughs> That's fantastic. What is a song that you could listen to over and over again and never get sick of? Uh, wow, there's a lot of those. Um, I mean, right now it's Black Eyes Blue by Corey Taylor. Nice. Um, but... Probably every Led Zeppelin, <clears throat> every Led Zeppelin song ever written. I mean, I, I don't nice. seem to ever tire of Led Zeppelin. Excellent. Not even Stairway to Heaven. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like 45 minutes long. So, I mean, you get, you get some distance on it. Variety, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this next question... Um, tends to be the most controversial of all the questions okay. uh, that you'll get asked. Mm -hmm. um, people, people have very strong <laughs> opinions about this. Um, so tell me, what is the greatest music video of all time? Cherry pie. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a big question, too. Um, you know, I don't know that it's the greatest. I, I, I would say with confidence that I do think it's really strong, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to base my answer just based on the emotional impact and, and the overall impact that it had on me. I think the one music video by Metallica is, is nice. pretty fantastic. Excellent. First time, first time we've had Metallica as the answer for this. So well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm, sure, I'm sure that answer would be controversial to many people. What is the greatest musical collaboration of all time? Uh, the greatest musical collaboration of all time. Hmm. I mean, there, there's definitely a trend in my answers, and <laughs> my answers are definitely rock-centric. Um, so there are probably equally great, if not better, answers outside of the ones that I'm giving. But 
I think that the Chris Cornell and Rage Against the Machine hybrid was a nice. was a pretty incredible collaboration. No one's on your slave. <laughs> you would be correct. You would be absolutely correct there. If you could have a song play anytime you enter a room, what would it be? Uh Dang man, this is like like if I were a professional baseball player. Like, what what would my uh, what would my song be when I walked to the plate? Um, I'll help you out. My answer to this question is the Flash Gordon theme song by Queen. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, dang man, I don't know. You know, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. This is this is a weird one, but uh. I'm going to go with Gooey by Glass Animals. Nice. Okay. It's like, I don't know, that song, that song always just puts me in a good mood. So if I can be in a good mood every time I walk into a room, that's a pretty good outcome. Nice. Um, what is the song that no matter what kind of playlist you're making, no matter what kind of vibe you're going for, this song will always make an appearance? Hmm. Um, Yellow Lead Better by Pearl Jam. Nice, excellent. I yeah, like that. I think it, it's it, it's it's applicable in in multiple different areas and in, in like vibes. So I go with that one. What is the best song for a road trip? Oh man, so many. Running Down a Dream by Tom Petty. Oh, nice, excellent. And what is a song that you would give anything to see played live. When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin. Oh, excellent. Okay, so do you want to go back to the skippers before we hit the last one? Yeah, we, we can do that. I don't know that I have any better answers, but we can do it. Let's go for it. Okay. So what is the song that uh, whenever it comes on, you have to dance to it? I'm not a big dancer. That's why this is hard. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm just going to go with Happy by Pharrell. Nice. Excellent answer. I mean, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a good, it's a good head bobber at the very least. That's fair. And that counts as dancing. So <laughs> that's right. That's that's my book. <laughs> so the final question. Okay. You are at the entrance to whatever kind of afterlifey type thing that you believe in. Um, and before they will let you through, uh, they're making you a lovely gift basket. Uh, there's some muffins and some like HOA type paperwork that you can worry about later. Um, but they are also making a mixtape of your life. Now, Mr. Ryan Carnes, the most important question that you will answer in this time that we have spent together. What is the first song on that mixtape? Stairway to Heaven. Excellent <laughs> answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cliche, but obvious. That's perfect. And <laughs> actually, you're the only person to ever say that. Really? Yep. Wow. Wow. I'm that I'm sh I'm shocked about that. Yeah. I'm the only person I ever say that. Yeah, a lot of people um it's the um their answer tends to be like the the first song they remember hearing or you know something something funny like Highway to Hell or <laughs> you know wow. something like that. Yeah. But yeah, that is a fantastic answer and you were the first person. So, congratulations Great. again. Thanks. Yeah. Um, well, at, le at least uh, at least there was some novelty to that answer since I couldn't come up with the one before it. Hey, it's no sweat. Um, so tell uh, the folks listening at home and all over the world um, where they can see you um, on the on the TV and in film and where they can find you on the social media if you would like. Yeah. So um, social media is Ryan Carnes one. My first name, last name, and the number one. Um, that's I'm at this point. I'm really only uh, active on Instagram. 
um, it's it's the same across, you know, like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, but I, but Twitter and Facebook, I'm not, I'm not really active on anymore. So Instagram is definitely the best place to catch me and, and also to keep up with what I'm doing. Awesome. Awesome. Um, thank you so much. Uh, this has been just absolutely fantastic. I, I have loved having you here and you are welcome to come back anytime you want, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And I guess I didn't answer your, your second question. So I have a movie on Hulu right now called Cupid for Christmas. Oh. And um, I have a, a movie called La Boda de Valentina that's on, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's on Amazon currently or not, but it's definitely on Netflix, uh, Mexico. Okay. Um, so so those are two, two things that are currently in rotation where uh, people can catch my acting work and then, you know, just stay tuned for the, for the album. Well, the, the upcoming singles and then the album, which will be early or some, some point in 2023. Nice. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. This has been a Rod Wharton production in association with Spring Break 83 Entertainment. All rights and trademarks reserved. No portion of this podcast shall be reproduced commercially without explicit consent.